to by the way <clears throat> anybody notice this book yeah yes and from the title you know this is something you really needed this it's beyond religion uh, i don't know how to read hebrew <laughs> How do you read this? Like this way? The young uh, What's that? Me'eber ladat. Okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? Yes. So, please read it. And His Holiness, he tried his best. Because he's, uh, because whenever he's, when you talk about Dalai Lama, then people go, oh, Tibetan uh, spiritual leader is Buddhist. So we have this kind of in mind, Dalai Lama, spiritual leader, and when whatever speaks, he speaks, he will talk about uh, Tibetan Buddhism. There's something that in our mind. But then His Holiness wrote this book to understand that we in this world, we need religion for sure. But then, more than religion right now, the current situation in this world is we are like so many uh, positive, uh, what do we call it? Qualities. Qualities. Which that we really don't need to study a religion in order to uh, practice that. So, once you go through this book, then you will uh, get so many ideas but what happened with my friend who is one my teacher she uh, brought this book and she uh, uh, read this book many times and felt like she's an American and then she she's a Buddhist and then she thought well my brother would uh, she uh, I want to takes a very good gift to my brother and then she thought of beyond the religion and she took it and uh, gave it to her brother and the brother was looking aha the little one spoke <laughs> <laughs> and she said yes the little one spoke read the title like this here this way yes oh, okay okay this way <laughs> Beyond religion. And then he said, okay, Dalai Lama, beyond religion, not possible. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, Dalai Lama is, uh, he, anyway, he will try to influence something. <laughs> but this is something very biased. So please look at it to do this, and then you will find oneness then you will find the Dalai Lama's committee that this morning we talked about it. As a human, there's a responsibility. As a religious person, a responsibility. As this nationality, uh, I have a responsibility. So you, you will get this idea from this. So, please uh, read this book. You can buy it from here, you can download from Amazon or something. So, anyway, so back to the 10 non virtues. <laughs> okay, so what's the absent now? Covetousness. 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 So, at the break, we did, we did a little bit of uh, discussion. So, actually, I forgot 
the meaning a little bit. And then she forgot <laughs> the what English word. <laughs> so now we are, we are ready. So here we are. So what's that? Covetousness. 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 This sometimes uh, we might not find negative. We might find like we need that. Oh, okay. Got it? Everybody got that? Okay. Because this is how advertisement works, I think. So, advertisement shows this latest technology is something that you need because it has something more than previous one you have, like iPhone 7, then iPhone 10, like they show it to you like this. Then you go, oh, it's really beautiful. Then once you see that in your one of your friend's hand, then you feel like, oh, that's amazing, that's really beautiful. I should get it. So this is how we get this kind of uh, influence is we do have covetousness. Okay. So what's wrong with that, right? So I have one a story how harmful that can be. So when the Apple what we call it, uh, made the iPad. So then it becomes so popular in China. Then so many people have this technology and then uh, on the news it, one time I read a boy, a very poor boy, he wants iPad so badly so he requested his parents to buy that, and so they can afford it. So the one that kid did is he went to hospital, or maybe he sell his kid. <coughs> so then uh, he got the iPad. So the boy is very happy because I've got the iPad now. Now I can go with the other kids. So that's the only situation we describe, but then it is also happening with us every time. So when you have a good bike, then you will go say, okay, I need a car now. Then I, you see, oh, this car, there's only one person now, only you. And then you never has a new BMW car, and then you say, okay, I need Mercedes. So this is, how it works. So, but you don't know that it's leading you to the suffering. That you just wanted this kind of attachment. So, Chandi uh, Deva says, be beware of this. Now then, Nersim, uh, what do you call Miles. So, when do we get mothers? So, once you got in a fight or you heard something, uh, some people is insulting you, somebody wants to harm you, and then ultimately you want if you heard that about that news, then you heard that I want to uh, lessen that person. And then, so then, also I have one story on this <clears throat> in Tibet. Uh, when we talk about revenge, 
right? So, in a uh, developed country like Israel, I don't think it just exists like that. In back, back in in Tibet, uh, they still do have uh, these. Oh, mother will tell the dear kid that your father is killed by that bad guy and you should get revenge. If not, you are not the real son of your father. So, one of my master, Yavjadamullah Jirapache, uh, during his teaching, he said, in Tibet what happened was, a father was killed and then mother uh, brought up his uh, her son, and then once he is in his uh, maybe twenties or strong enough, then she told that guy kill your father and get revenge. Should get revenge, and then that kid, not kid, but this the man, the man tried to chase him. And then, before the, that news got separate, uh, spread, and then the person who is supposed to be killed, that person ran away. And then the son chased him, something, some place in the desert, something like that. And then he uh, hide in one uh, house, which is uh, what do we call it? Tabumeva. Tabumeva uh, Without a landlord. Without a landlord, there's broken house, what do you call Broken house? What do you call it? I don't know. Yeah, anyway. So he was hiding there, and then some got into there with a, a big knife. Tibetans do have a big knife. So then, that person who killed his father was very tricky and then he was hiding behind the door and so he killed the son. And then that son didn't get a revenge. So what I'm saying, that Kivita Malucharupje told us a story. Uh, this is the story of a revenge, actually. You kill, sometimes you lose, you kill. You don't get what you want or This is very funny because our wish of to harm other is because you harm me. You harm me and if I harm you, I just relief. That's sometimes automatically here, yeah. somewhere here. Yeah. So actually, it is, if you see somebody got harmed, there's no relief in you. But then you talk about equality, and then, so then your mind got like, I should revenge, I should destroy him, I should kill him, I should do that, do that. So, so here, If something happened to that person, what will you get? This is a big question, right? Okay, you hit, you hit him, so I will hit you back. So after that, you become peace. That's the idea. But that's a very stupid idea. But we have this in our mind. So this is why we are trying to uh, get it, even if it's not worth of it. So, this is how the mileage work. And then we locked up, a wrong view, a wrong view. So, this is a little complicated. So, it is, uh, I cannot say this is, uh, in a Buddhist, when we, as you, you took uh, uh, refuge, and then already you have a commitment or a vow that you believe in three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. So then you feel like 
there's no Buddha Dharma Sangha at all, then that's kind of a wrong view. And if you are a uh, follower of Jew, would you call Jewish or Jew? Judaism. Judaism. Okay, Judaism. So you believe in God. Then you feel like there's no God. In that direction, you have having a wrong view. The wrong view is you can describe in the Buddhist, in your own religion, and sometimes you feel like even there is something right, then you feel this is not totally wrong or not right. You make your own decision before knowing the truth. That can be the wrong view. So this is more, a little bit more to do with the religion. So that's what I'm, I said. This is the base of all the religion. So every religion talks about it. That's why some uh, religious, they're not supposed to talk with other religious people about their own belief. Because there's a danger. Buddhism talks about emptiness, shuvinata, shuvinata. But then it's, if we try to bring dialogue with the other religion, then it is not very suitable. So this is more like to do business with Buddhist, uh, inside the Buddhist. And we should be very uh, aware because you might find that His Holiness talks about when uh, with the scientists that he talks about emptiness. So you might be, be curious because if it is that kind of secret or secret or the more to do with uh, Buddhist inside the Buddhist only. So why His Holiness is talking so much about him. Wherever His Holiness goes, he talks about compassion. And then sometimes he brings up the topic about emptiness. So now these days, scientists, they are not talking totally about emptiness. But the way of researching the emptiness, as Buddhists, they are doing research. The scientists are doing, or they found something that uh, uh, similarity towards it, where, where they talk about uh, quantum physics, right? So that they see the, or the object on the table, like the bottle. So, where is the bottle? Then you feel there's the solid bottle there. But then, when you try to find out the cap or the bottle, or the bottle itself, the plastic, the red level, you go through all this, you cannot find the water at all. And the same thing like we, I. So this person from India came here to Israel. So my name is Seko Rebuche. So from, from my head to toe, you can find Seko Rebuche at all. That these days, scientists believe that's true. So this is a something that His Holiness wants to prove, ultimate truth. So what? So His Holiness bring. this is not only uh, about we, how do we do the research, is not something only Buddhists only do. Scientists have already approached towards this uh, research. So this is why His Holiness is 
in the public talks, he shows in the Buddhism we believe this, this, this. So the, the, mainly the emptiness here, why we talk about is to fight our ignorance mind. So that ultimately we feel like I is the self-centered. So then you do everything for I. I want to be happy. I am angry. So this is what I want to do it. I want to. I don't want to do it. I want to do it. So this all comes through this emotion. So that kind of emotion the, uh, is get controlled by the ignorance mind. So now you know that everything is coming through this, then we need to focus on the ignorance mind itself. So then the ignorance mind is more like I, very solid I. But then when you, you do research, and that there is no such existence like that by its own. Then we talk about relative truth or conventional truth. So tomorrow we might be talking a little bit about that. So at one time, one Christian uh, believer, uh, I think, uh, what they do have? Oh, they not a father. In Christian, they have like a type of monk. What is called? Not a priest. There is preacher. Was that preacher? Preacher. Anyway, anyway, his one has said something. So he is the monk, and I think he is one leader of one uh, sect. But then, when they, his one is and. That a priest are having some conversation. And then he said, Buddhists have something very interesting called emptiness. Let me uh, explain a little bit about that to me. Then his owner said, This is none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> so it's true. Because he's not supposed to hear that. So this is the wrong view, that will become the wrong view. So that his owner being very uh, skillful, I think. So then he said in a teaching that if I try to explain about emptiness, then it, we talk about uh, interpreted or dependent. Then we talk more about dependent, then the person who is hearing this conversation will be checking with God that God is dependent, and then God is not permanent, and then he is, uh, what we call it, uh, the most uh, almighty. So it will break his refuge. So same thing. So this is how we describe wrong view. Okay, so, so now we covered up uh, three uh, Negative, uh, what is that? Ten, ten, ten non virtues, no, three non virtues for the body, four non virtues for the uh, speech, and three of the uh, mind. So, if you practice this well, uh, in the wrong view or right view, this you have to decide where you, you are. So, if you practice this well, then uh, Buddhists believe, and also Hindu who believe in next life, they believe you don't need to worry about next life at all. This is the main, main uh, what we call, cause. Jibon is a human. So this is uh, if you practice this well. So then you don't need to worry about next life. This is what it's said. So this is as a information I'm giving to you.
So now here, Shantideva is talking about the great Devo to recognize something like recognize the what we call the beauty of how you translate that? The results of negative action. Yeah. Recognize mm -hmm. you put it recognize the negative. The results of the negative. Okay, results of the negative. So now if we do so the question is if we if we do that, all this uh, ten non-virtuous actions. So then, Shadideva is saying that whenever you do those this kind of thing, at the end there is always yimideva. What is called yimideva? Happiness, uncomfortable. You will always feel uncomfortable. And then also, uh, jipa, anxiety, what? A fear. A fear. And then worry, what, what will happen to me? And this is not, we don't need to focus on our next life. We can say in this life, like all these actions, when you go on the news, many political leaders and the religious leaders and then uh, some uh, uh, ordinary people, why they become famous sometimes on a headline, news headline? Because they, they cannot control this. They did this ten, one of the ten uh, non-virtuous actions. So this is the really uh, becomes a scandal or something they have and have a bad, bad name. So I remember that news of Tiger Woods. Do you know Tiger Woods? Wow, come on is really? <laughs> you don't know Tiger Woods? Yeah, both. Tiger. Tiger. Tiger Woods, yeah. You got it? Okay, okay. You do this and you know everyone. <laughs> it's famous, see? So, when he had some trouble with the uh, scandal, he became quite popular scandal. So, his oneness was visiting New York or somewhere, and then News reporters uh, asked His Holiness about Tiger Woods. This famous guy called Tiger Woods, and he did this and this, and he said he he's a Buddhist. Yes, Tiger Woods is a Buddhist. And then he said uh, this thing happened because I stopped practicing. And now I will uh, try to uh, what we call solve this problem with practicing much better than before, and this kind of problem will go away. That's he replied uh, to the news reporters. Unluckily, His Holiness is visiting in New York, and the reporters asked a question to His Holiness, saying, "Well, you are His Holiness." Jago Wood said something like this, what do you think? Then His Holiness, first answer is, Jago who? <laughs> <laughs> so, it becomes most <laughs> popular. Because His Holiness doesn't know Jago Woods, because he, he's not interested in sports and golf 